So what are we doing today, Johnny? I don't know. Today we're messing with pieces of sledgehammer. Right. Yeah. I got some stuff. Cool. Yeah. This is the engine case for the sledgehammer. It's an so. AS41, which is Volkswagen speak for that's good. AS41 means um, basically it's a universal case they used in type threes, right? Type twos, type threes. And it also is a stronger case compared to some of the older ones because it has a higher aluminum content because it's an aluminum magnesium uh, combination alloy. Instead of straight magnesium like the earlies or? Well, the earlies still had aluminum in them, but not as much. And then they actually sell new cases, brand new that uh, have a higher aluminum content still. It may be all aluminum, I'm not 100% on that. I've never messed with one. So oh, those know. are called the super cases, right? Aren't super case. They're supposed to be all aluminum. Yeah, aluminum. We, yeah, we haven't been it's, privileged enough to purchase one. Yeah, that's the correct pronunciation. Aluminium? Aluminium. Right? It's true. It's true. <laughs> the plans for this case are going to be already done already already done already we have numbers on here yeah it's cut for 94s let's see okay 94s are the size jug basically cylinder cylinder so 94 mil 94 is the inside diameter because they're going off of the pistons yes All right but the it's Which, cut for the outer technically the pistons aren't even 94 it says here they're 93.93. .93. I don't know if you can focus on that, but. So other than that, we know it's cut for, we know it's cut for 94s because somebody wrote it here. Right. But we, we trust this number because we got it from someone who we trust, who's known in the Volkswagen community. Um, and we'll probably meet up with him later, I'm sure. Planning to. Planning to. And uh, the align bore here is on its first cut, so that means it's only cut 20 over, which right. is good for the size engine that I'm building. You want either a virgin case or 20 over. A virgin case would be like a new aluminum case. That has never been cut. The super case, yes. Yeah. And then it's been welded back here, and then for some reason they decided to cover it with JB Weld. I don't know why. Or maybe they just filled it with JB Weld. Who knows? Yeah, we'll, <laughs> we'll find out when we send it. But that is supposed to strengthen uh, behind this cylinder here because this, when you start cutting in here, it gets really close to uh, the outside of the case and can crack easily. Right. And also something else that's been done is it's been drilled deep here and then they put what's called a case saver, this thing here for your studs and it's way down inside of there. Yeah, that one, yeah, you won't be able to see it, but, right. but yeah, put the case savers in. Because it saves your case. Saves your case. Smaller thread, threaded rod, but it allows space for you to cut and open it up for 94s. Right. Because otherwise this would be way too thin. Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> well, I mean, look how close it is. Yeah, super thin. So. Cool. So basically what we're building is a 2056. Ooh. It's a little over two liters. It's a 74 millimeter crank throw and then 94 cylinders. Cool. Tight. What, what were you saying about your You want me to whip out my <laughs> I, don't, I don't think it's necessary. Um, but It's real shiny. Yeah, a brand new crank. Brand new 74 millimeter crank. Right. And that's the throw on the, on the rods. <laughs> you throw your around on your yeah <laughs> that's so cool yeah funny so funny all right cool so we got we talked about the case we talked about Johnny's crank mm -hmm. um, so working our way in to out next would be rods and then pistons so you talked about um, balancing those two together nah I don't think so I don't think I'm gonna do that no nah so, um, the difference between that crank and a stock crank, which we have here, this is the one out of my old motor. The dumpster motor. The dumpster motor. 
This one's got still got rods attached to it and uh -huh. a flywheel actually. But uh, the main difference is this crank has counterweights added to it. Whereas this one does not have that. Here, 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 and here. So this one is a stock crank. Oh, you can, yeah, you can see there. There would be a big counterweight here. Right. And then, you know, in the middle there, and then one here. So that's the main difference. Not only that, but this is a 69 millimeter throw, whereas this is a 74 millimeter throw. That's the length that your piston travels inside of the cylinder. Right, your stroke in millimeters. Right. So you said the, the dumpster one was how many mil? 69. And this one's now 74. Yeah. So that when I say more stroke, obviously you're getting more movement out of that piston up and down. Back and forth. Yeah, well, or back and forth. Because Volkswagen. it's horizontally opposed. Right. <laughs> cool. Yeah, pretty bitchin'. The correct way to do it is to have it dynamically balanced where you take your rods and your pistons and your and your flywheel and your clutch and clutch disc and all that whole rotating mass down to a, a balancing person a, a machine shop or whatever could do that for you it costs a couple hundred dollars but being a DIY kind of person I like to do things myself so you're gonna show us how you do it on the bench so to speak mm-hmm Cool. That's true. Maybe. So let's let's whip out your rods. Check it out. Tight. You want to set this. Set your scale. This is my little battery powered scale here. Turn it on. Wait for it to fire up. And then I just I have a screw here in the stud that I hang it on. And you want to do it to where it's just about level. Center that, drop it on there, and that'll give you the weight of the one end of your rod. Okay. Ish. So then you take that weight, and what I generally do, like this is rod A, I already have them marked. So then you go through and you weigh all your rods, you find the lightest one, and then you want to make all the other rods match that weight. So what I do, and I know it's not technically the right way. I just take my uh, angle grinder and I take away some material on the top of the rod here, just a little, little bit at a time. And then you, as you remove material, come back, weigh it, come back, weigh it, come back, weigh it, et cetera, et cetera, until it matches. Matches then what? The weight of the lightest rod, or as close as you can possibly get it. Then you do the same thing with the other end. So then you hang it by this end, so you weigh that, and then again, weigh all the uh, crank end of your rods, and balance those to within, you know, I mean, you can get crazy and do like 0.5 grams, or what, what have you. I've already gone through and weighed all of these, actually, and written it down, and I'm going to start doing that here at some point soon the actual balancing, but I'm gonna go back and reweigh my pistons just to make sure that those weights are correct. So I'll show you how to do that too. Start with number four. No, you don't have to. That's just the one I'm starting with because I've already knocked the wrist pin in. These other ones are kind of sitting out a little bit. So that could give you a bad reading. So then you, you weigh the piston with the wrist pin intact because that's part of the weight that's going to be going around inside the engine. Set that on there. Got your got your weight there. Seven sixteen point zero. Mm-hmm. You write that down, and then you find the the lightest piston, and you make all the other pistons match that. Now, what I did the last time I balanced pistons was I drilled material out of the inside in here. I know there's weight pads where you can take weight out of. That's right here. Maybe a little bit in these guys here because this is a different piston than what I used last time. I used stock pistons last time, and they didn't really have weight pads. I just drilled out inside of here, and it worked out pretty good. Until when? Until the case decided that it had enough. Because that was a trash motor, wasn't it? It was a dumpster motor, for sure. Yeah, you know, what do you mean by dumpster motor? I mean, I know what you mean. <laughs> the dumpster motor was built with uh, 
pieces that I just had laying around. I, I balanced the rotating mass, like I just kind of showed you here. So the actual rotating mass is still good, but the case is garbage because it was a garbage case to begin with. Awesome. Yeah. We went to the internals, right? We did the, the rods, the pistons, balancing, and then so now we're working our way out. After the jugs, we have heads. heads. So what are, we, what are we using for heads on this one? Some uh, pretty heavily modified heads, actually. Yeah. I got these heads from our good friend Gilbert. Yeah, you can check out his video. Over. I think it's going to be right here. Over here? Yeah. Okay. We're building his Ram Charger, or not he's... We're, we're documenting it. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> but anyway, back on to the head. So the heads I've gotten from Gilbert, these have been cut for the 94 millimeters. As you can see, the combustion chamber here is 45 cc's, so that'll help you determine your compression ratio. Your we'll deck get into that. Your deck height and all that? Well, deck height is off your piston. Off your pistons. Oh. So then if you're if you don't have enough deck height on your pistons, you're gonna have too high of a compression ratio and blow up your motor. I thought you and Gilbert liked to blow up motors. Oh I love blowing up motors. Oh. <laughs> but this one it costs a little more than my last one. I wasn't too worried about the last one just because it was only like five hundred bucks I think total after buying bearings and just to put it together um, this one's considerably more right so I'm trying not to blow this one up so, so, so we got we got big valves here on both sides yes these are considerably bigger than stock um, I believe he said that these were 42 millimeter intakes and 37 and a half on the exhaust I might be wrong but uh, I guess I could ask Gilbert and we'll put it up in the in the comments in the comments that George loves to make <laughs> <laughs> or, or he won't or maybe he won't who knows so cool. it's been cut for 94s like we said uh, big valves and then if you turn it around it's got dual springs now I've heard that term a lot and I've had heads with dual springs and it's quite obvious if you look there's a small spring inside of a big spring Right. But you can't you can't really see you can't really see it. With the camera. They're, they're hard to see. Yeah. But anyway. I probably you can probably see it here. Right there. Can we? Oh there we go. Kinda see it? Kinda sorta. Yeah. Yeah, George, okay, there you go. George can put an arrow pointing towards it. See the fat spring here, and then you look past that fat spring, there's a tiny one in there. And that allows you to snap shut your valves a lot faster, right? so much faster right so it's got dual springs it's got titanium retainers Ooh. already installed these are these are made from titanium so they're a lot stronger right um it's been ported a whole bunch and polished actually real smooth in there and in fact they ported these heads so much that they had to weld here here and here so oh. that they could port it as much as they did so they welded shut so it's not so thin, kind of what they did on the case. Right. Right. We've got the heads here, yes. right? So after the heads, I mean, you have any plans for uh, lifters, uh, push rods? What are you going to use for those? Cromoly push rods. I already have my lifters. They're up in a box up there with my deep sump. Ooh, running a deep sump. Yeah, big one. Deep sump allows you for more oil. So, chromoly push rods, and you're going to do rollers on it, or no? Roller rockers? Um, probably just swivel foot adjusters, aftermarket adjusters. Yeah, we'll see all that when we start actually putting the motor together. I so. haven't actually bought those yet. Right now, I was just worried about the big pieces, i.e. case, heads, crank, rods, cam, etc. Ooh, you mentioned cam. We didn't talk about the cam yet. Oh, no, we did not. That's part of your valve train. So the cam runs off the timing of the crank. I actually have one sitting here. This is the cam out of the dumpster fire. Dumpster fire. And uh, it was what they call a cheater cam, which is qu equivalent to like uh, like a 110, I think, is what they say. A 110, does that mean 110 lift? It's the designation for the Engel cams. Oh, just for a just specific one, it, brand. It's a Engel 110. 
I, don't, I really don't know what that number means. Right. I don't know the lift and everything and duration off the top of my head, but mm. uh, that's what the it's equivalent to. So anyways, this is your cam gear. This gear goes on your crank and it rides like that. So as the crank turns, it turns this, turning your cam and opening your valves. Yeah, and then your lifters ride on these, these cam lobes causing your push rods to move, causing your valves to snap open and shut via the rockers. Indeed. Is it about so, to sum it up? Yeah, so I'm, gonna, I'm actually gonna be reusing these gears, not that bearing, <laughs> <laughs> on the new motor because they're still good. These are what they call straight cuts. They're aftermarket and normally you would have uh, kind of a helical cut gear. Here's an, another crank from a stock engine and you can see the difference here straight cut versus helical cut All right, and I like straight cut gears because they got kind of a wind to them I'm assuming that's why you like them. That's why I like them But the other thing that a straight cut gear does is it takes the load off of the cam and Keeps it from breaking under high stress like in a high horsepower engine like we're building oh, high horsepower like what are you thinking i don't know probably like a buck 50. it's <laughs> such high horsepower <laughs> well in a car as light as this one is that's gonna be a lot of power considering i went from i think probably like 60 in the other motor maybe to 150 maybe a little more not sure yet we'll throw it on a dyno probably maybe probably not though <laughs> 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 so this is the camshaft the new one the new cam that we're going to use in this engine you can see it's new because it's not worn down at all it's a fresh grind and this is the eagle cams 2242 and what this is is it's about equivalent to an eagle 120 you know, your lift and duration are gonna be slightly different, but it's almost the same. Yeah. So, it's gonna scream. I'm gonna tell you that right now. It better. It freaking better, or I'll kill. Scoop it up! Scoop it up! That was Johnny uh, going through the rundown on uh, what we're doing for his, his sledgehammer. The hammer of mini sludge. Very, and I don't even remember how he came up with that name. I think it just kind of named itself. Yeah, it just kind of came to me one day. So yeah, we're just going through the basics before we put the short block together. Um, kind of a little bit of information on how to balance your rods and pistons the mm, shade tree man way or how to... I guess you could say it's shade tree. Shade tree mechanic. I or... just like to do myself. Yeah as most of you probably like to. It's kind of neat to learn something, and I know a lot of guys who build a lot of big motors that, that use that all the time. They have no issues. If you have a couple hundred bucks, yeah, go ahead and pay a machinist, but if you have zero dollars to balance your motor, now you know how. Yeah. Cool. So we'll kind of film as we go putting this thing together. Yeah, we'll put it in short block form, and then we'll start getting a long block and everything together, and then we can do burnouts. Tight. Maybe. Yes? For sure. Right. <laughs> Pushing 160 horse. In a car that weighs like... A thousand pounds. A thousand pounds. <laughs> so yeah, that's kind of a lot. Power to weight ratio. Right. I know bikes that weigh less than that with a lot less horsepower. Or le weigh more than that with a lot less horsepower. Yeah. So, anyway. If you like this kind of content and all the other videos we've done, uh, go ahead and make sure you go ahead and like it, uh, subscribe it so you can stick around. We've got a lot of builds going on. We're gonna start working on the sledgehammer motor. Uh, we've got Gilbert's uh, Ram Charger we're working on. We're trying to still un the box. We've got another two or three episodes of that thing going. And then what, what else we got going on? I think we're gonna start pulling my 31 out and start doing some sheet metal. Yeah. So, I don't know, I think it's pretty cool. Make sure you subscribe, give us a like, share it with your friends. And uh, that's it. Yeah, we'll see you around. She was easier to say that time. Yeah, I don't know why it was so hard the second, the first time. Anyway. <laughs>